It's about time I did a little bit of free flow of thought in regards to my constant rambling about Robert Singer that's kind of littered between just about every video I've done in the history of ever. So here we go. Robert Singer has been around since the origin of the show, and I can give him that. Robert Singer, it's not that he has no place in the set. It's that he has no place in being the one with an argued control over the set. And we're going to go over a brief listing of why. Robert Singer is a Sam and Dean fan. The brotherly relationship. And yes, that is part of the show. The problem is the obsessive compulsion and maintaining that is all the show has to afford. Um, Robert Singer being around is when he's alongside Kripke, Edlin, Carver. He does he does good work. He he generally sits down and he will, you know, keep it reeled in enough that he He remembers the brotherly attention, and it's actually a problem I had in season 8, 9, 10, and 11, is that Sam kind of became backburner, and that's actually partially because uh, Carver was there and was trying to make up for damages from season 6 to 7, which were singer seasons. Just remember that. Season 8, 9, 10, spe specifically more than 11, were literally damage recovery based off of the buck back from season six and seven, where the show ratings tanked so dangerously hard that literally all Carver could do was like bait the Castiel and Destiel audience back at this point. That is, that's why you, you can check my romantic framework of Destiel video and whether or not you're a shipper, anti-shipper, I really don't care. Just sit and watch it because whether or not you support it and you want it to happen, the structure is there. And the thing is, watch that video and you'll actually click with this conversation. Carver had to bait that audience intentionally with a romantic arc after romantic arc after romantic arc to rebuild an audience that almost went through a mass exodus. Actually, they did go through a mass exodus when Singer tried to destroy Castiel in the past. But Castiel is not the only character that Singer has gone out of his way to destroy. And by the way, even after they brought Cass back, Singer was so against having him and the team as a long-standing companion and has been cited as saying he doesn't have a home and he's not actually part of the family, etc., that... You know, he, the next thing we know, we end up with crazy cast locked away for God knows how long until he can be an immediate convenience to the crew and to the ratings just long enough to be like, well, look, we put cast back on screen. We're good. So then Carver offsets that by counterbalancing it with a heavy Destiel drive. Again, romantic framework. Just look into that when you can. Um... And as a result, there was really very little time for Sam on screen. And Singer was still around during that time, which is why we at least got Sam in the trials and a few other things, because he maintains focus on it. Now, um, I'll give Singer that he provides that, but he keeps trying to hone viewership like a laser pointer onto a teenage male audience and that's great that's what the original demographic was but QED we're in season 12 people who are 15 years old when it came out are 27 I'm in my 30s okay like ah so you're at this point kind of shitting on your original audience who has tried to stay loyally through and you are shitting on the better part of the large demographic because ever since the build through season eight onward, the better part of the audience has become teenage girls. And now that bothers me. I rant about the teenage girls in my other work plenty of times. It's frustrating, but that's what it is. And if you refuse to acknowledge your primary demographics, your show is going to fail. Yes, Sam and Dean do need to get bounced again. I've actually got in my anti-ship video method of just handling it all so simply. Like, it doesn't even take time to accomplish this. You just, it can just be, and it can be fixed. But instead, we're going to go through this war zone. So, another 
character that has died, for example, uh, Charlie, did you know Robert Barron's and Jim Michaels actually argued with Robert Singer to not kill Charlie? They presented other plot ideas, but because this need to destroy anything and everything and anyone that might enter the life between Sam and Dean, which is becoming a toxic relationship at this point, just because they're so broken and you keep breaking them and you keep destroying them by taking out anyone that can build anything with them. Singer needs to be second fiddle. The idea of maintaining Sam and Dean, he can be there. He can... He, he can give advice and, and side recommendation, but don't let him be the one running the show on at least half of the episodes and more usually. It's because that was even during a season he was just under Carver, but it was still in the episode he was given to be the producer of. With Charlie, just to clarify. So why do we keep doing this? Why do we keep letting this man run off and literally, like, gun down any character that can be support and affiliation for the characters and the ratings at this point? For nothing more than some compulsion to believe that you can still try to focus this on 15-year-old teenage boys thinking that they're gonna give a damn about watching 35, 40-year-old men have a brotherly relationship anymore. It's not gonna work. And the worst part is, you look at reviews with Robert Singer in interviews, and he literally is still in the 70s. The only thing about Robert Singer is he will overload us with special effects now that it's modern. Yeah, let's look at season 12, Lucifer has red eyes, red eyes, red eyes, red eyes, red eyes, don't forget Lucifer has red eyes and wings and red eyes and wings. Super Saiyan power up. And over the course of all of the other seasons, they used less red eye gloss on, on, on Lucifer than they did in season 12 alone. Why? Are, are, does he really think we're that stupid that we can't tell it's Lucifer even when it's in Nick? What what is the point of this needless over expenditure of budget on completely tacky CGI? Before the red eyes were just this gloss of omen that could strike us at the right moment and make skin crawl. Now it's just like Lucifer looks up and he has glowing red eyes. I don't care about his red eyes. Nobody ever wanted him for his red eyes. <coughs> That interview, I'll actually cover it. Um, he was asked what he felt set Supernatural off from other shows in the genre and what's different about producing now than when he started in the 70s. And he literally said, nothing's different than in the 70s. Like, the only thing different, according to him, is the CGI. The same stories and jump scares and tensions and creeps and, and delivery of story elements work the same in the 70s, which is pretty much when TV became common in the household. Before that, before the 70s, there were literally only a couple of TV shows that ran several hundred episodes and then constantly re-aired. Very few people had television, and this is the era it became public access. And it was a new and shiny thing, and we would swallow any garbage entertainment that came at us. And I guess to some level we still do, and that's literally what he's banking on. That's the problem. He's literally waiting for the audience and, and just expecting us to swallow any garbage that he throws at us because he doesn't feel the need to update his uh, digital entertainment standards since when he began in the 70s. And you don't see a problem with that? He 
He's old. He's stubborn. He hasn't changed a bit over the course of the 12 years he has been on this set now. And he's not just the anti Destiel gatekeeper that he's the anti anybody that isn't Sam and Dean gatekeeper. He doesn't really seem to give much of a shit about Destiel. It's just that, that it's a character that Dean could build an attachment with, so he has to go away. Same way with Charlie, same way with Kevin, same way with anybody else that's ever died under Robert Singer's watch. Or advice. The fact of it is, he needs to go away. The season with the best recovery. And, and it's a thing, you know, people recognize season six and seven were garbage. There's only a couple of people who liked it. It's like, I liked it for the humor. You liked it for dick jokes? That's, that's literally all season seven was. It was dick jokes. Dick jokes and an enemy that was weak to borax because reasons. All of this other mythological foundation all around. And the big evil is allergic to borax because reasons. And then we get the most retardedly deus ex machina weapon to kill specifically it that works one time and doesn't reload. And then all of the other leviathans apparently just stop trying. Let the, the, the resolution of season seven doesn't even make sense. You stab the leader, so all the others go home, or like, what the hell just happened? And that's a singer season for you. And this is what we have to look forward to in season 13 still. We can have no faith in the writing or substantiation of what's going to happen as long as he remains the primary onboarded producer. It's just a fact. The season with the best recovery, people didn't mention though, season 8, 9, 10. It wasn't the best, but it was better than 6 and 7, and it was trying to get back on track. And yes, it ran through the Destiel meat grinder, because that's literally the only way they could recover their ratings at that point. And people that were already continuing to watch were going to continue to watch with or without Destiel. So let's bait back in what was at that point about like 35% of the viewer base or something like that. Yeah, they needed that. And, and Carver pulled on it masterfully. But he was still offset by Singer, by Singer, by Singer. Charlie's death. All of the things that did not have to happen whatsoever. The only point the show got back on track, like truly to the point that people don't even argue, like this, se the season was good. It was another viable ending point, even season 11. Oh, guess what? Robert Singer just kind of stepped down during that season. He went to co-executive consultant, which basically was like, I know you used to work for us, dude. We'll come ask you if we've got any questions, but later. Why they let him back, I will never know. Because look what, it's the same thing. It is the same story, point for point, again, under his direction, pulling up the exact same set of things for the exact same end, and it's doing the exact same things to the ratings that it did last time, and we're still getting him next season, just like after season six, for whatever god-awful reason we got him in season seven. Ah! Stop! Let him go co-executive consultant again. What? Uh, we, we've still got Phil, we've still got Jim Michaels, and we've got Andrew Dabb, who's been on board writing since season four. Give him the floor. Please. Okay. That little vlog, I feel a little better. This is just going to become my rant. This is my therapy zone now. This is better. But for those of you who wanted to know, no, I'm not Andrew Singer sucks because Destiel. That's got very little to do with it. I'm, at, I'm Robert Singer sucks because, well, Robert Singer sucks. Peace.